Believe it or not, this structure is a dam. It doesn't look like it because most of it has rotted away. There are no known photographs of it in its full glory. But this is what it looked like in about 1950, before the rut had gone too far. Modern technology allows us to see what it might have looked like with a full head of water behind it. Driving dams were a solution to a problem. As the trees around the coasts and on the easy, flatter land were worked out, the loggers were forced further and further into the mountainous country inland. It was often a land of steep, sharp ridges and narrow, rocky gorges, many resounding to the sounds of running water. This was where driving dams came into their own. It could take a few years to get enough water or logs for a drive. Over that period, the logs would be felled or rolled or dragged into the valley above the dam or shooted there. And logs were placed too below the dam. A critical mass was needed here to hold up the flow of water to come. Enough resistance was needed to create the proper drive effect. Driving dams came in many sizes and with different designs. But they all had certain things in common. Of course, they were built to hold water. But they were also designed to collapse. And to collapse to order. The idea being to release the water they held in a quick, explosive surge of power. Tudor Collins photographed dams being tripped several times. On one occasion, they were nearly the last photographs he ever took. Well, there was a, a small dam up the side being tripped this day, and I went up, and the dam was tripped, and I heard the roar and thunder of it coming down, and I had a good vantage point, and uh, I fired. But I was standing on the head of an, an old tree that had been felled, and the, the logs and the dam water picked the tree up and dragged it from under my feet, and it took me down a couple of yards, and I was only a few feet off the water. And I tell you, I got a terrible fright, and I thought, that's the last dam I'll go to take. The original idea for dams had come from Europe and was developed in North America. But nowhere else was anything quite like this tried. The forces involved were huge, But no dam was professionally engineered. No theoretical calculations were made. No drawings were ever done. Rather, they were built by bush carpenters. With simple tools. By rule of thumb. So how could a dam be made to collapse quickly, but only partially? 
and so that it could be used again and again. At the base of a dam is an opening called the flume. There were different designs for the gates that controlled the flumes. In this example, at the top of the gate, heavy timbers called gate planks rested up against the main stringer. Dams were built to be used more than once. So all the moving timbers were wired up so that they wouldn't go with the flow. On the floor of the flume, the sill, the gate planks rested up against a pair of cross trips, which fitted into notches cut into the sides of the flume. And in the centre, they rested against a vertical post called the tom. The tom fitted into a hole cut into the sill floor, called the tom hole. The top of the tom was held by a shaped metal trigger, which was stapled to the centre of the middle gate plank at one end, and which had a ring at the other end. A wire through this ring held a knocker, and lifting this sharply knocked the trigger off the top of the tom, allowing everything to come away. This is the only known film of a Kauri log drive. It was probably taken in 1926.